simply what is mental health. Again, um, privilege for our students of mental health here, so we are not going to the details. And the most important aspect of this discussion, really, is to remind ourselves that we are human first. And if we are human, we have a brain. And we have a brain, the brain can malfunction in one way or the other, isn't it? You know, people imagine that mental health issues are for those people in a mandate. And the most important reason why we are going to go through these slides, probably some we even have seen because I had it in the slides, because it's the same thing. And sometimes you forget and you imagine it's about those people. But we've seen most recently that all of us are at risk, we might be affected. And it's very important, the same way you look at yourself in the mirror and check whether you're dressed well and check whether you, your hair is looking fine, you also must remind yourself to keep checking how you feel, how you are interacting with people, how much you feel about your work. You know, those very small things that define mental health. And I'm saying this because we've been, we've been culturalized to imagine that mental illness is about the mad man walking in town, which is really not the truth. The truth is, all of us can be affected in terms of how we feel about ourselves, how we relate with people, how we deal with the challenges in life. And sometimes we wait until it's too late. By the time someone is wearing 20 clothes or talking to themselves or attempting suicide, is a bit too late. And we need to normalize checking continuously on how we feel. I believe by the time I'm done, I have a root what the definition is, because I know all of you can read the person at the back. And it's good to check even as we talk. How do you feel about your wellness today? How do you feel about your own work? If you ask that question today, do you feel you want anything? Do you feel like you have some dignity? How are you managing with the current challenges? Because there are challenges. For us, maybe it's how to deal with the kids today. I thought there was someone who was going to take care of my children. Then as I had when I was going to be living in I was like, ah, to deal with my kids. You know, that's a challenge, isn't it? But I was not going to come, which used to come, I was going to come with my kids, and they told me they have had bad even seen the river. You see, that's mental wellness, isn't it? So I didn't get depressed, I didn't have to look for you, not take care of them. You were able to adapt very quickly. How are your relationships? Are you relating with anyone? I'm not talking about boys maybe, but as is your mother, your classmates, did you know that if you're continuously struggling with your relationship, it's possible that you're not mentally healthy? So we need to expand our understanding of mental health and remember that all of us have aspects of mental health issues, but we don't have mental illness. I, say, you know, I hear this strange statement that people say that all of us are mad, it's only the degree that one is that's not true. They say we are not all diabetic, but you have a mind and it can be affected and you continuously need to be interested in taking care of it. And then if that what was there is the mental wellness, what is mental illness? And again, simply put, without repeating the psychiatry class, we are thinking about how you view perception, how you view the world. We are talking about how you believe, how you believe systems in line with what is expected in the current situation. How, are, how is your thought process? Are you thinking as would be expected? Because if you're always thinking people are attacking you, people don't like you, probably that your thought process is abnormal, isn't it? It doesn't have to be people follow you per se, but even as you sit in that class, you say, oh, the teachers don't like me. That's a negative thought process, isn't it? You know, I know we are taught in the mental health class to think about the delusions and the preoccupations, but there are many people who have some in the spectrum of wellness. And Pulling it towards unwellness because they have very negative view of themselves. They believe everyone is following them, and that may be an issue. Good. And it's something that's assumed. How have you been feeling most recently? And I always insist that your mood can't be flat. If it was, that's when that might be illness. If you remember, because we were going through the class on some schizophrenia, we say if there's flattening or affect, so you're not able to express your emotions, affect that disease. We expect that you'll be happy sometimes. We also expect that you'll be sad sometimes. But if you notice that you're continuously sad, even when the circumstances, for example, I believe this is a happy environment. See, you're going to go to the house, you're going to go to the house. If you're feeling sad now, <laughs> maybe we need to have a seat at the corner somewhere. Because I imagine that, especially in these moments, 
the inner is flowing and sounds nice, but you're feeling sad. Now, that is unusual, isn't it? When we need to take personalities again, and sometimes we ignore this aspect of course, there are the severe issues, but again, we also need to be taking on other traits that we have been carrying that border on awareness. People who can't make decisions, for example, did you know, like dependent personality disorder, they can't make decisions, you need to keep consulting. And it's not bad to know that you have such traits. The important thing is to know that there's something you can do so that it doesn't affect you, isn't it? So very important that you keep checking. And this discussion today is not for our patients in Kenya or or in Kenya or whatever it is. It is for us, ourselves, isn't it? As you see, especially as the workers, unfortunately we are trained to think, you know when Dr. Jane talks about fractures, probably some of us will never have fracture. God will take care of us, isn't it? But for mental health issues, most of us will be affected by an aspect of it, isn't it? So we need to be taking. So that even if you don't get those diseases you talk about out there, most likely there's an emotional, there's a perception, there's a relationship, there's a stress issue that will affect you. So it's relevant to all of us, isn't it? So we say about the imagining in a room more than you know, you know, check, maybe the quiet, spread young, ama, by someone who is close to you. Because that's what makes it relevant. And I like talking about uh, stress and mental illness, especially because it's a big confusion. Many times I've uh, interacted with people, young or old, and people say, oh, I don't have a mental health problem, I am stressed. And people don't seem to define the boundary between stress and mental unwellness, and we need to be clear when it's just stress, and when it's mental illness, and attention is needed. And uh, I always think of us as matter, if you remember that physics class. And uh, because your matter, life events stretch you or put weight on you. And naturally, according to the laws of physics, you react, isn't it? And you're able to withstand so much. But most important to remember that even the strongest metal, I don't know whether it was still within the strongest, but what is it when you imagine that is If you think about all the materials, there's glass, there's strong metal like steel. And in between the others, maybe plastic or something, isn't it? This is the truth. We are also made of different materials. And some of what has defined what material we are made of is out of our control. It's dependent on your genetics, it's dependent on how you were raised, whether your mother was present or not. And we sort of need to understand that because of those things that define the materials that we are, then we can pose on pressure we remember that class affects us differently. And we need to continuously be aligned to that fact. And to remember that for all of us, we can be sad so much. But beyond a certain point, beyond a certain point, even for the strongest material that maybe is not steel, it could be something, I don't know what it is, even that can get to the breaking point. And at the point where you get to the breaking point, then that becomes dissolved. That's a big business, isn't it? And therefore, our business then is to continuously understand ourselves. What are we made of? Are we glass? Are we steel? And that we may not change because it's already been defined by several things. And then, do we know the pressures, the weights, and the pulls? What are those things that are pulling you and bringing, putting pressure on you that can get you to the breaking point to the extent? that you will require help. And is there something we can do continuously? And part of my presentation will be that. What can we do? Because again, we don't want to repeat the science class. Well, so it's good to know that stress is important. If I wasn't a bit stressed about what will happen to my children, I wouldn't have been creative enough to know that if I carried their tablet and something, they'd just be well entertained, isn't it? You need a little pressure to think, to be creative, even financially. If you don't have a little pressure, you'll be creative to start a business. If, so it's good to look at stress positively. We need a little stretching. We need a little push and pull to be creative and to exploit our potential. But we need to always look out when it's getting out of control. One other important thing is, one, if you look at the World Health Organization, many people are affected. I think they say one in four people are very affected. So if we are 100, if we are meant to be around 100, it means 25 of us are actually affected. But the worst thing about mental illness is that it's not accepted. 
It's not acknowledged. They don't have any other explanations of why people go through this. And the worst thing about that is then many people want to do this up. And if you look at again figures and facts, three quarters of the people who struggle with mental illness have not accessed the care that they needed to receive. Why? Either because they don't know, but we are happy that we are sitting here and sitting in all the other forums that help us increase our awareness of mental illness, but also the result of stigma. This is the truth. I have seen people who have really severe depression, for example, even young people, including college students, but the last thing they want is to be associated with mental health issues, and so they had rather not be seen, or if they have to be seen, they wanted to see them in a You know, if you, I told Dr. Botetti, I have an issue with my bone. I confidently walked to the entire hospital and there is no problem to visit it. And I think that confidently said, I'm going to go and I'm going to go to the But sadly, for mental health issues, despite many of us being affected, it is not acknowledged as part of normal illness and people are afraid, especially because even the society does not understand. And we need to be part of the society that acknowledges that God has given us many parts of the body, including the brain. And the brain can one function. And if it did, in terms of changes in mood, changes in the way we perceive things, it's okay to seek mental health care. And it's okay to seek this care early. And even when you interact with a relative or a, a friend who has such illness, then you're not going to separate them. You will really treat them like you treat someone who was bleeding or someone, someone who had pain. And we need to normalize accepting that there's a kind of pain that people experience that's not physical, and that too needs attention. So very, very important. And I know you know this because we have many explanations, and as far as the, the children of God, because I believe we, one of the things we have in common here is that we are believers. We have also seen that our own believing, even becoming part of the hindrance of being people seeking help, especially because, as a matter of fact, if God forbid, I cheat them and broke my leg, you guys will pray for me. Because you believe that, I'm not going to tell you that. But you will also make sure that Dr. Chetty comes on time or another doctor comes on time to take care of me, isn't it? Why is it that when people have mental health issues, we only want to pray? And you want to say, the same way we seek help for high sugars, hypertension, the same way we should encourage people, we do pray. Because we have seen, especially for believers, even just believing that it's demons or it's stress that can just be prayed for has been a hindrance. So we need to normalize and we need to pray, but also normalize and encourage people to care. So very, very important. And there are many types of mental disorders. Again, this is not a psychiatric class, but it's not that we appraise ourselves with what are these disorders we're talking about. We keep reminding ourselves that you know, all of us are familiar with psychosis and we acknowledge that we are very disorganized. But if we remember, that class made of yours, you video on yourself, the fact that you've been feeling very sad, the fact that you've been feeling you have no energy to go to class, the fact that you feel very anxious, and when you're called upon to give answers because you have anxiety disorder, you know that that's also illness, and people need to seek help. So we need to keep reminding ourselves that there are many types of mental illness because sometimes we only focus on psychosis or bipolar, the obvious ones the more severe disorders. But the truth is, there are people who have been totally impaired by something like OCD, for example. I remember seeing as a student who unfortunately could not graduate from college because they were so obsessed with the issue of germs that they sit in class and unfortunately, as the nature would have it, they have a ball of nature. And when they go to the bathroom, their head is so convinced, everything is so dirty. They spend the next two hours trying to clean and they kind of cheap before COVID happened, they began in cheek to try and clean themselves. And of course, what happens to the class where they were two hours ago? It is over, isn't it? When they begin to wash their clothes, they begin to sit so dirty, they will wash until 3 a.m. What happens to waking up to class? So they actually could not complete university. So it looked like something small, but something like obsessive compulsive disorder, their obsessions within arrangement. There are people who are so obsessed with uh, checking that they will waste the whole day, go back, go back. They get to the room and they realize, oh my goodness, did I leave there? I box on and they come back. It looks like something small. It is easy for you to tell them, are you, she, they are going in But the truth is, they are struggling. So we need to remind ourselves, they are many, it's a whole spectrum. 
or different disorders and you can continue reading because it is not possible at all to discuss that in the next few minutes. But you keep reading, especially for minimize yourself with a more common one than the ones that we are likely to see. When a colleague of yours tells you, I feel very sad, I feel hopeless, I don't see the reason why I should come to class, then you can actually be depressed. Don't tell them, man up. Or she they have money, I have a lot of pocket money. And even when you see a pocket money, you find a lady, you know that's what we do, isn't it? It's good to know that even when people have been given everything, they can be depressed. Because there's a whole, there are so many other factors that could contribute to something like depression, isn't it? And we've seen people finally killing themselves. Um, I hope you know that most of the people who attempt to kill themselves have a mental health issue. And one of the reasons why people kill themselves is because nobody understands. You try to talk to someone that you start with the whole thing, and that's kind of the end. And that's kind of the end. And that's kind of the end. it was for the boy child. And that's why we have seen that men tend to kill themselves more. Because for the girl, if I say that I feel like crying, someone will produce some tissue, isn't it? But what happens to the boy child? You, you are shocking people. Like, why do you like Come on, mom. Come on, Papa. And you want to tell the boy child today. Because the pressure affects human beings like you and me. It's okay to feel sad and help is available. But you don't seek it from the wrong places. Don't go telling people on Facebook that you've been feeling sad. Because the responses you are making to get there you will probably escort you to the grave faster. I'm sure you've seen that, isn't it? Just like, yeah, it's room, like, man, I don't know, of genie. Hey, you are even doing medicine, and you are on the campus to do that. You know, that's what those are the references, isn't it? And before you know, a guy now finally realizes the end is no more. So, just we want to say it's okay to feel sad. Depression happens to real human beings, just like all other illnesses, but seek help in the right places. People who people who understand. And I type on a mood disorder again, when you don't have someone who is extremely excited sometimes, or you're feeling that way yourself. And then sometimes you feel from down or other people like who are here now too. It's possible that you don't really have a bipolar spectrum disorder, and it's okay to go and have a consultation so that it doesn't affect you. The same thing is, especially because most of the people tend to start with what we call bipolar 2. The you know bipolar 2 is the milder form. So you feel a bit excited on top of the world, then at times you, know, you have what we call dystopia, you feel down but not too down. The sad thing is, we wait until now you have proper money manic episode where you are extremely irritable, where you are, your, your excitement is ever too high, and then now at that time you may start developing severe symptoms and you have to be brought to hospital. So it's very good, important to keep listening to what you're feeling, to keep observing, especially to close to your loved ones, before one who said, oh, we need to see can I record a hug to them? Then how can I say, would it be that we have them, they have high and low moods, and could it be that they need help before it's too late? So very, very important. To check that out. I find that psychotic disorders are the easier ones, people who hear voices, but it's also good to watch the people who are looking themselves or you feel like you are afraid to move out, you feel like people are following you, you can hear footsteps, you know, simple things like that. You know, we notice the, the obvious ones, the ones who are wearing pretty clothes, but there are very many people who have psychotic symptoms but they don't realize because all they do is they are afraid, they feel like something is happening. But they can't explain what, so they start isolating themselves. So such things will actually be indicated that you will be unwell. And you know the earlier the treatment, the better sadly, especially for the people who we, call, we say have what we call negative symptoms of schizophrenia or psychosis, the ones who are not able to relate with people, they don't talk to themselves per se, they don't they don't even hear voices initially, but they don't hear, they have difficulties relating with people, they have difficulties initiating activities. And they always feel like people are following them, so they lock themselves. Those are missed. And they don't have the duration of untreated psychosis, they're more difficult. So we need to be aware uh, of these things. And the alcohol and drug use. And again, and, and I have many young people coming and saying, I'm not mental. Who am I in what eleven? But this is the truth. When you start taking alcohol and drugs, it is bad manners. It is a bad buyer. And people can be even pray for you. But unfortunately, when you get to the point where the chemistry of the brain changes, it's an illness. And because I'm talking to young people, this should be the message. Prevention is better than cure. Because nobody started taking alcohol to get addicted. I think that's the most important and simple message. And the most if you come to a rehabilitation unit and interact with the young with the people who are there, I can tell you, 
is a struggle. Sometimes I had rather have gone away from tiny homes than addiction. It's very, very difficult. Especially because it changes. And because in the brain, they withdraw are very uncomfortable. People really struggle. And you see people killing themselves finally because they can't. They are never. So, and because I believe you haven't started, just run away from it because it's difficult, whatever it is. And uh, anxiety disorders, again, as much as they are not very bearing to many people, there are people who you've seen they look shy, but the point is they feel like collapsing. And uh, maybe they face people, those who have social anxiety, isn't it? And that's their mind about everything, even just traveling. Don't dismiss such a person, just dismiss yourself because help is available when you're continuously worried. We see a bit of worries, okay? When I was coming here, you know, people are going to happen to my children. Will they even calm down so that I can present what is going to happen as normal, isn't it? But when it's impaired, when you're continuously worried, and you always feel like things will go wrong, and it incapacitates you, prevents you from making decision, it could be disease, and there is hope for it. Of course, PTSD, and this is what we always say. For people who've been traumatized, 75% will just be fine. We have a large resilient, the way God created us. But 25% of the people, when you go through a near life, a, a, a near death experience, whether it's a car crash, even violence of some sort, even people who've been attacked, even on the streets by cars, it's possible that you're not going to be affected. You don't feel weak, don't feel bad. It's because you're human. You happen to be the 25% that can actually be affected. And you find that every time. Uh, such news happen or anything that reminds you, you feel completely paralyzed, you keep experiencing it once again, it's important to know. You're not going to be going through post-traumatic stress disorder and help is available. And one other thing to note, previous PTSD was thought to be of people only who experience the accident or the traumatic event. But it's good to know, if you learn that your mother or your brother has actually gone through a very traumatic event and maybe they could die, that too can actually result in PTSD. You know that is also assuming, eh? because people say you have not been in an accident, but learning of sudden death, especially sudden traumatic death of an abdomen, increases the risk of PTSD also. And if you're going, if you're struggling and you keep feeling like there's um, it's many months later, you feel like you're receiving the news now. You know that what God is living, we experiencing, isn't it? Help is available, you would have to be struggling. Suicide, of course, we have seen a lot of people, including Christians, killing themselves. You wonder why we just say it's because they probably struggle. Probably what less than five percent of the people who kill themselves actually didn't have a mental illness. More of the impulsive type of people, you know, who say, Nah, I put you up, I end up going to glass. But most of the others they have struggled with something: depression, substance use, severe anxiety, even obsessive compulsive disorder. Those things that have impaired you. And you can't get a job because you have to keep checking, you always get paid. So they look simple, but they can actually result one wanting to kill themselves. So we need to be people who are preventing suicide by being aware about ourselves and about other people. Very, very important. What was his mental illness? We don't know. That's the correct answer. Just that, just like we don't know what was his diabetes, hypertension, they are all chronic and communicable diseases, isn't it? So that we don't know doesn't make it very different from all the other things. What we know is that there are many risk factors. It's nature, nature, interaction, biopsychosocial factors, many of them from genetics, from any illness that affected the brain when you're growing up, from life just happening. And happening in a way that's difficult, you lose a parent, you have no school fees and you're continuing to struggle, all those things to get into a relationship that's not working. So we need to know that because there are many risk factors, then we need to look out for them along the life, our lives so that we can keep we as much as possible do something to make sure we are minimizing the chances. Of course, we are not hundred percent in charge. Even for families who have a risk of diabetes, you might do everything by still get diabetes. So it's true that we will still get it, but the question is, are you are you aware and are you able to continue doing something to prevent that illness? And of course. We have the current issues that are happening. We are all familiar, especially the social media. People are asking, has there been an increase in mental health issues? The fact is, we never did a basement survey. So as a scientist, to say yes, it would be a lie. Because well, where are you comparing with? But then there's so much that's happening. The social media, poverty, 
accident, so many accidents and now they are reported live even before we read for 9 o'clock news it will be on your phone, isn't it? and of course there's the the concept, I don't know whether people call it a Kenya dream of being like Chris Kip, their friend from you, isn't it? you know people talk about chasing the American dream but then there's a chasing the Kenyan dream where you must own a plan, you become important because you've seen how we respect and value people who are rich at a side of the day so I'm sure one of our people when you're not a person like a jerry one of our MCA no one to organize is there, isn't it? and so we are made to believe that for you to be respectable you must have some money or you must be supported and so we are chasing and working towards being appreciated and fortunately all these are contributing to mental health issues and we need to be aware we need to be to do whatever it is that we can do to protect ourselves what is the hope for mental health issues? Treatment is available. And I know people say, but ah, these patients don't recover fully. It's also true that even hypertension and diabetes, they don't recover fully. But stigma has made us to look at the fact that mental illness for some patients doesn't, then the symptoms don't resolve completely, we give up. But we don't give up on diabetes, despite some people giving people even on four regimens. So we must not give up on mental illness, and we must continuously try to do something to give hope. And uh, yeah, time. How many more minutes can I be given? Ten. Ten. I have ten minutes. So I think for me this is the most important but short discussion. Just reminding ourselves that this is true. I think we get to heaven, and I believe all of us will be to heaven, walking on the streets of gold, and uh, we would be sleeping. We are told, isn't it? You know, I put a word to turn a single. We are not. Here. And we must remind ourselves continuously that it's your business to take care of your mental illness. You may not control the fact that your mother left you, you may not control the fact that your parents are have conflicts, you may not control that right now the doors are not guaranteed. It's not our we are not in charge of that, isn't it? But we must build continuously the ability to cope with the stresses of life that will definitely be there. We say it come back home stress. You're already in heaven, you're not a man who could join the CCC. Whatever it is that we have, we everybody will go through some challenges. The most important question is whether you go through the challenges, is whether you can navigate the challenges, isn't it? So then how do we do that? And the first important point is self-awareness. You know what you're going through now. You know what the challenges and you articulate them. My main patients will tell me, you know, my words are very and you want to be doing this and not going to get And that's true of many of us. But we need to get to a point where we have to write down now our words on the other side. And I feel like 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 I feel then you're able to get a specific solution, isn't it? Because the people who are able to get a big one, 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 big one. So let's expand our vocabulary. Let's listen to ourselves, how we feel. Let's see when we look at ourselves in the mirror. Let's normalize looking at our emotions. And just making sure that you got it. You know, when you're okay, you're okay, you're okay, you're okay, you're okay, you're okay. It's the same way, but you can't correct everything unless you understand it, isn't it? You need to have seen that the color the kujana for you to correct it. How we you emotionally if you can't even define what you're feeling. So self-awareness is the first thing. The next other important thing is self-care. Basics. And especially I know that maybe right now for students, I don't know whether this happens, but uh, if I be so busy reading, you have no time to reach. I know it's true for us, they qualified. And even myself I'm a student of self-care continuously, I am continuously improving. There is so much to be done. And sometimes you think that when you're in school, that's when you have more time. When you come here, you always wish you were a student again, at least it was a bit organized. Yeah? So, this is the truth. You must learn to recognize that even you are important, especially for healthcare workers. We always take care of people who take care of us, take care of yourself. Sleep well, eat well, exercise, and do more harm to the things that hurt you like alcohol, caffeine, and all the other things. So social support, social support. Who is your friend? If anything happened to you today, 
Is there someone you can call? Is there someone who will have your back? And social support is not social media involvement. It's not how many likes you have had on social media. Those, and that's not your social support system. Social support system is real people who have, who are, you interest at heart, they understand you, they want to support you. Especially for boy children. Who is the support system? You know, they are not going to do women. But your Kujikaza is what is causing the boy child to die, isn't it? Because then you're told you can't talk to someone. Normalize talking to a trusted friend. Don't talk to everyone, but then everyone doesn't care. But normalize talking to someone. It can be your classmate, it can be when you get out of your school to be students all the time, your best man, it can be your big brother, it can be your father. But normalize sharing your problems with someone. Because when you don't, then they start overwhelming you, getting you to them breaking point and so slow who put it. Problem solving. Again, a very important skill that we all need to have. So much simple with other part. Fact. Now much that you see a person, much they are relationship, much they are neighbor when you go to the moga. Like whatever it is that you people have problems, isn't it? But what do you do with the problems? Do you sweep them under the car carpet? And again, you continue reading. In these few minutes we can't talk about all the problem solving skills. Do a root cause analysis. Why do I have a financial problem? Why do I have a relationship problem? Root cause to the root, isn't it? And then ask, what can I do? You know, when you do a root cause analysis, you do recommendation. What are you recommending for your current problems? I mean, we had all day talk about just root cause analysis and problem solving. How we do solve the problem option A, B, C, which one makes more sense? And follow through and do monitoring and evaluation. That we use in corporate work, but the truth is, even in an working environment, but even in your life, are you monitoring whether the solution you propose is working or do you need to go to be? Very important, isn't it? And always be open to, because one need to work, I'm going to the next, not giving up all the same. So, under management, I think this has caused a lot of challenges. I'm sure we are familiar, especially in relationships, when you teach people have even hurt each other. And we need to always recognize that when there has been conflict, you also had a role to play. Say, I, I did what, I am unhappy because, and I am willing to do what. Don't always want to do what people can do. It's always about I, I am unhappy about, and I would like what. That's what we're talking about in anger management. And if you can, don't act when you're in anger because it's doing well. It could be harmful, isn't it? Positive thinking. You are what you think. You think you're useless, you feel useless, you behave like a useless person, people are going to use this people. Then you say people don't like you. That is because of your thinking and process, isn't it? Evidence-based thinking. I failed the biology exam. No, not it's not biology, physiology. This one be more specific, isn't it? I failed physics, then the physiology exam. It's not I am a failure. But you've been passing all this time. You are if you're a failure, then you should have been failing everything, isn't it? I failed something specific, evidence-based thinking, and I am going to do what about it. Not I failed everything, I'm never based on my person, everything, or a boy gives you a gun. And say, no one likes you, what about your mother? What about your sisters? So, everybody hates you. It's not a match. Evidence-based thinking. Being in your activation, I like my sister. I like my sister in yellow. You see the way it's bright and beautiful, isn't it? That day when I see a cochini, that woman go yellow and orange thing on the mirror. That is That is the day. You know when you're in yellow, you feel good about yourself, isn't it? You know you're just not to speak about what you feel about yourself. That woman that time you just say yellow on my head, now you can say now to realize the river is still flowing, the sun is still shining, isn't it? That you know we can't go alone. Most of the time, negative thoughts come to our door. Wow. When you feel hopeless and useless, you know, until you meet a man, you don't put your foot on it, you don't squeeze a stone, you don't dare to ask him a word. But if you put your foot on it, you don't get repent. You don't want to step on it. I am sorry, God, for complaining. Isn't it? So behavior activation is cheering yourself, doing passive, actively, not passively, actively doing something that will cheer you up. Whatever it is, other people are going to ask you. In Colombia, that's why they are going to show no bone. We just test you. Whatever it is you do, do and for girls, whatever it is, isn't it? But you're not being happy. What are we saying? We are human beings, we have a brain, we are not just, isn't it? And whatever it is that you do, if you're not mentally healthy, you're not okay. And 
it will continue to struggle, but we must be part of the solution, starting with us. And it's important to know it's okay not to be okay. But help is available. God bless you. very much it's a program, uh, for, for, for for speaking to us and mentioning such wonderful things. I know we have learned a lot uh, and maybe this is something you have not understood or something you'd like to be highlighted a bit better you can ask as we prepare to go to the next section of questions. But that if there's anyone who has a question for the planning before she Sits down. Well, before she sits, my nose is about your pressure. She sits. Yes. So, if someone is not feeling happy and they want to see a doctor, if they start with the psychological counselor, they come to the psychiatrist, who should they, besides their friends, of course, but the professional, who are they supposed I think it's a very important question. Whoever is accessible, let's start with it. Because Paul, if you practiced as we should, God should be able to handle you in the sense that if you start with a counselor, if a genuine counselor should be able to say, I have assessed you, I feel you depressed, go to a psychiatrist. A psychiatrist should be able to say, Well, I feel like you don't have, it's not severe enough. Yeah, thank you. It's not severe enough for you to do a medication. I think the only problem with the Kenyan way, with the way we do things, is um, there's a lot of distrust between psychiatrists and uh, counselors and psychologists. And we feel like if I defy you, then I may be stealing a patient from you, which is very unfortunate. But really, each of them should be able to get them. A counselor does psychotherapy. And there's a role for psychotherapy. Remember, we say this by psychosocial unit. So a counselor should be able to say you have depression, I take you through completing behavioral therapy or interpersonal therapy, that's the problem that if you are problems in relationships. But a psychologist should also be able to confidently say, but on this one, you need medication and amplify it to my colleagues. So both of them, whoever is available to you, hoping that we can improve, we are really hoping that we can improve how we practice things so that no one feels disadvantaged. I've seen counselors and psychologists, and I know there are colleagues here, probably medical psychologists, who have who have kept patients too long and then someone attempted suicide. But I've also seen some guys who are attempting to give medication when it shouldn't have been given. So we really are hoping that we can we can do better. Thank you very much. Sorry for coming late. I'm excited to sit at the back. I'm not sure if I have a social anxiety. Not sure. Free therapy is available. Okay, thank you. Um, I wasn't sure I'm, I'm coming to the right meeting, but now I'm confirming it was the right meeting. The first time I I got involved in, in CMF, that was last year, I think. It is because a topic like this one on mental health uh, was going on. Uh, via Zoom, and I just bumped into it accidentally, and I found it very interesting. And through that, I, I got involved in, in CMF initially, virtually, and finally, uh, you now physically. This is the hard copy of me. Uh, thank you, Dr. Koba. Uh, the topic always finds a very, very soft spot in my heart and in my mind and in my body um, because it helps me um, revisit my own life, my own issues and one of them is that even at my age, by then my birthday is next week, um, issues like stress are still there. Uh, the other thing I want to observe is that uh, issues of mental health do affect people across board, across all social, uh, economic uh, strata. 
uh, I think a few years back, I think it's about two years ago or thereabout. A second year um, law student at Harvard, the son of a US senator, prominent US senator, committed suicide. And it was reported that he had been having depression for many years at 25. Again, a few years back, I think I remember reading about a psychiatrist from South Africa who committed suicide. Very prominent psychiatrist. You know, the point I'm trying to bring out is between uh, that kind of situation and all the way down Hapakwa ground, Hapakatikati, there are all kinds of situations. And it seems like many, uh, mental illness, for that matter, cuts across all those. Situation. My question was going to be on stress as a factor precipitating um, mental health to a point where somebody like me or somebody like somebody else can now come to a psychiatrist. Um, are there indicators? We talked about self awareness as a way of going about it. Are there indicators which I can use to help assess myself? For example, I know if I'm going through this, this, and this, my stress level is likely to be within these limits. If I'm going through this, this, or the other, then it's at least limits. We talked about books, no? Yeah, it took me far back in time. Yeah. Before we get to that limit of elasticity, how can I know in my own cocoon, in my own environment, working environment, home environment, that with these factors that are happening in my life, stress is getting to a certain limit that uh, needs perhaps to be addressed professionally. Thank you very much. So I wish there was a, a measure, a clear one. You know, like weight. Some of us who are interested in a weight keep checking and you can say I've increased by two kgs. Unfortunately, there's none. But for me, the most important indicator is change. We all have us, whatever we are defined that we talk too much, or we sleep too much, or we just eat. And a change from the usual that persists and impairs. That's simple, three things. So I have been sleeping long enough. The last two weeks I've not been sleeping well enough. The last two days I've not been sleeping. And it's persisting, it's continuing. And it's not because you're waiting for a big examination. So I think that the simplest way is it's changing. It's not what you're used to, or someone else you know. That's not their normal. And then it's persisting. Of course, we expect, we say there's no flat. Flat is also normal. But you expect that sometimes you sleep a little more on a Friday evening, because tomorrow is Saturday. You know that kind of thing when you've been awake the whole time. But you're saying it is on a Tuesday, you should be tired, but sleep it calm. Or it's on a Monday, you should be fresh and sleep calm at 2 p.m. Or you've been enjoying a plate of omena, and now for the third time, you look at it and wonder why people eat those little things. All of a sudden, it's quite speaking of You have been the first one to go for sleep on Friday, and for the third week, fourth week, you wonder like, why must you go? We just want to chill. And you don't want to interact with people. So, chill is the first most important thing, and it's not just one off, it's persisting. And it's affecting how you've done your business. So, that's simple. And that's why we say you have to keep looking at yourself in the mirror. If you face, if you have acne like some of us develop, you will know that the people have come unless you can visit it. So continuously check it because how would you know unless you have checked, isn't it? Let's normalize checking. Those very basic things, eating, sleeping, relating, doing very basic business. You have always been the kind you just dress up and go out and suddenly you are no longer interested and just looking nice and you don't care what happens. Simple things, not the big things. By the time the big things have happened, uh, thank you very much, Dr. Koba. Let's give her another opportunity.